Italian kids are usually very welcoming, friendly and supportive. I think the children do know that and they do really feel very much loved here. How the kids uh, were treating their disabled or neurodivergent classmates. Speaking of the downsides of moving to Italy with children, Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been quite a while since we just sat and talked a little bit and in today's video I've decided to cover one particular topic of expat life that I have never covered before and I don't see it very covered to be honest, uh, especially among bloggers, expat bloggers in Italy. So today I wanted to talk to you about moving to Italy with children. I don't have children of my own yet, however I do know quite a lot of people who have children and who moved here together with their little children of various ages to be honest. And I have also worked as a teacher at an Italian school while uh, doing my bachelor's as an intern, so I do have quite uh, some insights into the whole topic. But before we jump into the video, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to get the notifications of all the upcoming videos. And watch this video till the end, because I have a very exciting announcement to make at the end of this video. And now, if you're ready, let's jump and talk about having children and raising them in Italy. So first thing first, and a very important thing about Italy and the relationship of Italians with children. In general, Italians really, really love uh, children. And I think that children do know that and they do really feel very much loved here. Uh, for example, if you have a little baby and you're out with your family, uh, with your baby somewhere in public, you will most definitely have a bunch of people just coming and telling you a nice uh, thing or think or two about your baby, just complimenting your baby and you yourself. And I think that's very cute. Obviously, some people might feel a bit less comfortable with so much attention in public, but there is nothing wrong with it. You do you. And if you don't feel comfortable with it, you just have to tell politely the people that maybe you're not very comfortable at having them so close to your baby. But in general, I don't think that might be a problem. I really think it's very cute and Italians will not complain usually about your baby crying or, you know, if something goes wrong. They are usually very understanding towards uh, the babies and towards children in general. And if children are playing around and just making noise, nobody will tell you that it's a bad thing and uh, you are disturbing them somehow. And I really think that that's amazing if you're moving here with children or if you're planning to have children here in Italy. Also, uh, you should know that Italian families and especially the grandparents are usually very, very involved in the uh, in their grandchildren lives and you can often see grandparents waiting for their grandchildren after school and just spending time with them and I think this is an incredibly cute trait of Italians. Speaking of the downsides of moving to Italy with children, I personally feel like there could be just one. Uh, I feel like there are not as many entertainment options for children as there could be compared to other countries. And when I say entertainment options, I mean like entertainment centers, like family centers or uh, play and discovery areas or something like that. Uh, there are kind of some uh, centers like that, but not as many as there could be, especially in bigger cities like Bologna. On the other hand, there are plenty of uh, fun parks like Gardaland or Mirabilandia are exceptional fun parks not only for children but well yeah for adults as well i'm a huge fan of those to be honest and also there are water parks so for summer entertainment these could be absolutely amazing if you have kids or if you don't have kids you know you still can go there and enjoy yourself because i personally absolutely love them so if you're moving here with kids or without kids or if you're traveling to italy make sure to check those out check the fun parks or water parks if you're a fan of those as well also, you'll often see the museums, especially big ones, uh, hosting various labs or workshops for little kids. And I think this is absolutely amazing when kids uh, have the opportunity to learn all those new things in a fun and creative way. Just a few days ago, I went to the ceramics museum in Faenza, which is quite famous. And I've seen a couple of guided tours for children, special guided tours for children around the museum. And some museums also have dedicated areas for younger children. And I think this is absolutely lovely that children do have this opportunity to learn all the things and uh, museums basically equal fun for little kids which is which is great also i feel like italian uh, parents are quite concerned with their kids education outside of school so you will often see families on guided tours or visiting castles museum various historical or artistic places and yeah i think this could be a very good motivation for you to pick up this habit and uh, 
just be more present with your kids when they're learning new things and help them learn these new things and learn something new for yourself as well. Now moving on to uh, schools in Italy and education in general. As I said at the beginning of this video, while I was pursuing my bachelor's degree here in drama art and music studies, I was interning for quite a long time as a drama teacher in both elementary and middle schools, so I had a chance to work closely with Italian kids and also their teachers and to just observe the situation in general. Uh, just to give you a little idea of what it looks like, the, the educational system in Italy, the kids start at school when they're six years old, they start with elementary school, then aged 11 they move on to middle school, which is from 11 to 14 years old, and then they move on to high school, usually liceo or instituto tecnico, depending on the concentration your child chooses, and they study for five more years in high school to graduate from high school when they're around 19 years old. And well, first of all, I think that's great. I really like this idea of studying until you're at least 19 because I think you are more mature, you are older and you might have a better idea of what you want to do with your future. And also because it just gives you more time to be a child, you know, and to have these carefree years. Uh, anyway, as I said, I had the opportunity to work in both elementary and middle school and speaking of elementary school that I was really fond of, my experience in elementary schools here, I think that uh, most elementary school teachers are usually very nice and uh, have this calm demeanor and are very attentive to the needs of the children in their classes or at least these were the elementary school teachers that I got to meet. I feel like middle school teachers are often older which is something that I don't really know how to feel about. I think it could be great because these teachers might have uh, more years of experience but it could also be a downside because they might be less patient and maybe less um, available to cater for the needs of the teenagers. So I think this could be a bit difficult. However, it really depends on each single teacher and on each school. And I think that's the situation in the majority of countries. So that's nothing new. Speaking of the school facilities, uh, these vary greatly based on whether it's a public school or a private school. And even among some public schools, there will be schools that have uh, better, more modern facilities and those that are, well, older. So as in any other country, it's really important to inform yourself and to make your research. Obviously, one of the main uh, concerns for the parents are the other kids. And I think that's absolutely normal when you think of how will your child be feeling himself or herself surrounded by uh, other kids in a foreign country. From my experience of working in Italy, at Italian schools, I can say that Italian kids are usually very welcoming, friendly and supportive. During my time at elementary schools, each single class that I've worked with had at least a few uh, foreign kids in it. And honestly, they were doing great. Uh, I've seen lots of uh, the Italian classmates being very supportive and attentive to their peers and they really had no difference between um, a foreign classmate or an Italian classmate and I think they integrated really well. And also one of the sweetest things that I've witnessed while working at elementary schools were how the kids uh, were treating their disabled or neurodivergent classmates, which was absolutely the cutest thing ever because they were always so attentive, so patient and so thoughtful and supportive towards their classmates that needed uh, some special extra assistance. They were always ready to help and they were willing to help. One of the most recent examples of how Italian kids could be so welcoming and friendly that I could cite to you are the Ukrainian kids that had to flee the war and some of them ended up in Italy and went to school here. And I've seen a bunch of videos of Ukrainian kids going to school for the first time here in Italy and I think that was absolutely amazing in the way in which they were welcomed there. Their future Italian classmates have decorated their classes and their schools in the colors of Ukrainian flag and everyone prepared small meaningful gifts for these uh, children and everyone was so supportive and eager to help and so welcoming and I think they really made these kids felt uh, welcomed and loved here. And speaking of Ukrainian kids, I've paired up with some of my friends who are now organizing a non-profit to help the Ukrainian kids who had to flee the country because of the war, or war anyway, affected by this horrible war. The non-profit is called Next Generation UA 
and uh, it was organized by my expat friends, Ukrainians as well, and I'm trying to assist them as much as I can. As you probably know by now, I'm Ukrainian and obviously uh, I'm very passionate now about helping the people who need some help in this current situation because I'm absolutely devastated by what's happening in my home country and this is my way of helping, this is how I'm trying to be useful from here and also my expert friends who are trying to be useful by uh, launching this non-profit and by helping uh, all of the kids that they can. Uh, this non-profit will focus mainly on uh, healthcare and providing mental support as well as educational opportunities and recreational options for all of those uh, Ukrainian kids who were affected by the war. The non-profit is currently at the pre-launch stage. My friends are now raising funds for the launch and I invite you to join this initiative. You can follow Next Generation UA on Instagram and also on Facebook and you can check out its website and you will help us immensely by just spreading the word and raising awareness and sharing information about this nonprofit in progress. If you want to donate, there will soon be available a special page for donations and also might be a, there might be a crowdfunding campaign. And if you want to volunteer, you can fill in the form on the nonprofit's website, leaving your location and your availability and the team will contact you as soon as there will be uh, any events in your area because we have planned a huge amount of very exciting events to help these kids. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked this little overview of what it's like to uh, have kids in Italy, to raise your kids in Italy, to move with your kids to Italy. And uh, I really hope that I can inspire you to move here or maybe encourage you to move here if you had uh, some doubts or worries about that. Anyway, I'm always open for conversation, so please leave me a comment. Uh, if you want to ask me something more specific about a school system or about uh, raising children in Italy, I can try to help you as much as I can and I'd be really glad to do so. Once again, I remind you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to get the notification of all the upcoming videos because there will be a lot of them about expert life and also travel vlogs. And as usual, don't forget to put a thumbs up, comment and share this video with your friends so I can make more videos like this. Thank you guys for being here and enjoy your day!